got it. Hi, everybody. Happy Monday. As you come on, comment, say hi. Tell me you're here. Tell me if you can hear me or if I just look like I'm muted. Give everybody a few minutes to get on. And give me a way to try and figure out how I can see everybody's comments. All right. So again, when you pop on, say hi, tell me you're here. Tell me what you're knitting, where you are from, where you live now, not necessarily where you're from, but where you live. I keep getting more and more out of state people, which is really cool, or out of town people. Um, and I like to see that. I like to hear all the different places. Mm -hmm. Well, now I lost my video. Here we go. Ha ha, I got you guys now. One moment. I just can't see very many at once. So hi, Joan, Cindy, Sarah, Chris, Sherry, Marcina, Tammy, Charlene from Glenny. My mom started her summer sorrel. Excellent. So you guys must be able to hear me okay. That's good. Melissa's working on her summer sorrel. Julie's working on her summer sorrel. I love it. Uh, so again, I apologize that I'm uh, looking up and down because I'm trying to figure out how to do this on two different computers. Tammy, on block 21 of the eternal scrappy hue shift. <laughs> I'm sure it feels like it's just going on forever. But it probably isn't. And it's a great way to use up your scraps. You know, you don't have to finish it all in one sitting. You could kind of set it aside for a while. Just say it. Mercina, working on the body of your summer sorrel. Good to hear it. Hi, Barbara. Give it just another minute or two. So those of you that are in the lower peninsula, well, Barbara, maybe you got some of it too. I don't know. Um, tell me what kind of, how much of that weather you got coming through the other day. It was, we were up camping at the campground and it was like the Amazon rainforest out there. Uh, lots of rain and it was steamy, not, um, the best place to be uh, in a campground in a travel trailer during a tornado warning. Uh, well, I don't know what the go what is going on here. I guess I just have to keep scrolling. Tammy, you have to finish twenty five. How many do you have done? Hi E. Hi Nicole. Chris working on pop of color bandana cowl. Ooh, I think I've seen that one. It sounds familiar. Barbara, halfway through section three of Slipstravaganza. That was a fun one. I liked it. Hi, Joyce. Light rain in 70. Oh, we had like torrential, torrential rains. 20. Okay, so it's not bad. Five more. You can do it. It's so close. <laughs> All right. I'm going to try one more thing here and see if 
no, that's not what I wanted to do. See if I can get comments a different way here. There we go. This might work now. Oh, I'm getting ready to get started. As you come on, tell me hi. If you're watching this on a replay, comment in the notes that you're watching on a replay. I like to hear who's watching later. Sarah, rained off and on over the weekend in GR. I got to play Dodge the Raindrop since I'm in the process of moving. Ugh. That doesn't sound like fun. Deb and Karen were here in the shop and got ready to leave. And she said it was like her opening the door to go outside was all it took for the skies to just open up and start <laughs> pouring on them. So um, they had to book it out of there in the rain. Hi, Mary. Hi, Terry. Hi, Julie. So again, as you join, tell me um, what city you live in or state if you're out of state. Tell me what project you're working on. I know you guys have seen this top on me before, but um, it's kind of appropriate for some of the new yarn that I'm going to be talking about today. So keep that in mind. Oh. Mom, I'm glad your party wasn't this past weekend. Yes, me too. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Welcome to Monday Motivation. Today is Monday, June 28th, 2021. My name is Kristen. I own the Little Yarn Shop in downtown Saginaw, Michigan, 203 South Washington in Saginaw. Uh, inside the SBRC Marketplace, lots of other cool shops to see. Uh, I go live every Monday at 7 p.m. If you have watched the videos, if you like the videos, I do ask that you share them with craft groups, share them with knitting groups. Um, I like talking to new people. I, I think sometimes I give you guys some helpful hints that maybe somebody else could use. <laughs> Melissa working on the sorrel. Terry working on summer shandy. <laughs> Jackie still working on you know what. Jackie has a love-hate relationship with brioche. It might just be a love or a hate-hate relationship at this point. <laughs> Not sure. All right, so let's start with knits. Like I said, I know you've seen this before. This is the summer sorrel. Melissa posted a link to it in the comments. It uses a uh, fingering weight yarn. It looks really good in um, variegated colors, tonals, uh, a lot of different choices. There have been some people that have done fades with them. Um, Mom, and on, you, on YouTube, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Elaine. Mary working on autumn leaves rectangular shawl. Cool, I love, I love all these projects. Um, so that's what I'm wearing. It takes, what did we decide? Anywhere from two to six. Melissa, do you remember? I don't remember how many it took. Skeins of fingering weight yarn. Uh, the designer has three different versions of this top. She has the traditional swirl, which is fingering held with a mohair, which is really beautiful. If you have a variegated that you wanna kind of tone down a little bit, that's a good way to do it. Obviously it's not as much of a summer sweater. If you're putting mohair with it, it'll be a little warmer. One moment, please. Tammy, the strawberries and dirt yarn. Um, I don't know the actual name. The, the base is, um, I was gonna say it's Cascade, but that wasn't it. It was Gusto Sock. I don't remember what they called it. Hi, Lisa. Okay, so Melissa says two to five skeins and it covers a wide variety of sizes. It is definitely size inclusive. So it's a great project. And knit on fairly big needles too, unlike the one I'm working on now. So that's, um, I don't have anything finished. I really hoped that I would have had a hat finished to show you guys. Um, you know how you find a pattern and you think you have the perfect yarn in mind for it and then you start going and it's kind of anticlimactic 
So I found this pattern for the Dahlia hat. Sorry, Melissa, I didn't mention that one earlier. Dahlia. Isn't it cool? Obviously that's the top of the hat. It shows it in different colors. It shows it in a solid. Apparently she has a cowl also. So I had this great idea. I had this rainbow yarn that I thought would be fantastic in the background with a dark solid. The problem was my rainbow yarn changed colors too slowly. So I was like halfway up the side of the hat and I was still in red. And that was all I had knit was red. And I thought by the time I'm done, all I'm gonna have is a red and orange hat. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys the yarn because it's, look at this. Look at how beautiful that is. Label reading makes a big difference. If you look at this, you can't tell, well, unless you're a dyer, I can't tell by looking at this, this is a self-striking yarn. I almost would guess that it's a variegated, but that's what labels are good for. So this is um, Harmony DK, which is um, Earth's unique base. So it's their self-striping DK weight yarn. And they have this special edition hand dyed rainbow. But when you wind it into a ball, look at how cool that is. Earth always does a really good job with bright, vibrant colors, and this is no exception. I just thought that would have been such a cool hat. Um, they do have other colors, their normal, unique self-striping stripes more quickly and would be a better option, but that one went by the wayside. There's no point in just keep knitting if you're not going to be happy with the end result. There is nothing wrong with ripping out and changing your plans. So that yarn, though, is, I just, I just put a call out. I, I apologize. I'm still in camping mode, I think. I just put a call into uh, my sales rep to find out what the status is of their inventory, because I do know it's a special edition yarn. I have it in sock yarn also. Can you guys see it back there? See it right there. Ha, ha, ha. Um, if you get a 100 gram skein of Earth's unique self striping yarn, fingering weight, it will be 100% superwash merino. If you get their sock yarn that comes in the box, it's broken into two 50 gram cakes and it's a merino nylon blend. So if you like some other colors but want the nylon in there and to actually make socks, that's a really great way to go. Um, let's see, hi, Beverly. Welcome, I'm glad you found us. I'm gonna grab one of those just so I can show you the different. Oh, and I, I never even got a chance to talk about it on the Monday video, but I got these yarns in before and they went so fast, I didn't even talk about them. So they come in this box, you can only see one of them but there are two down in there, identical, 50 gram cakes, all wound, ready to go for you to make socks. What they do also is put a picture on the side of what it looks like. Isn't that cool? So their Harmony ones, like I said, a special edition, they run $25.99 a skein. I have, if this is something you're interested in and would like to have me either set some aside so you can come and pick it up or ship out to you, um, let me know how many you would like, how you would like to receive it. I have a few on hand. Again, I'm trying to find out from my sales rep exactly how, how many they have. So I don't oversell what they don't have in the warehouse. That's the fingering weight though. Same concept. That's, that's how the, the DK weight one is going to strike, which is, I don't know. I think it's really cool. And I also got these zebra ones. Look at that. <laughs> I realized when I was looking at ordering some of their self-striping sock yarn, actual sock yarn, I don't really have any just black and white hand-dyed yarn. Um, 
I reordered more of these too because I kind of want to make a cowl out of these. Beverly, would the two skeins make two socks? One of these boxes will make a pair of socks. So each 50 gram ball would make one sock. So you would get a pair from a box. Um, unless you're knitting for somebody that has like a size 13 men's wide foot, then you might run out of yarn. But a standard pair of hand knit socks, one of these boxes would be enough to do a pair. So that's the zebras. Those are $25.99 too. I think the regular ones are a dollar or two less. This was another special edition one. So that's a, <laughs> that's a long way for me to say that's what I'm not working on. What I am working on with that yarn. So what I had chosen for the hat, what Victoria helped me pick out, my daughter, was this really 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 dark blue can you guys see that oh, that is a gorgeous this is malabrigo arroyo in their color i believe it's prussia blue i lost the label of course so that was going to be the lattice color and then the rainbow in the background it just wasn't working so joyce and i had kind of talked about she mentioned doing a heavier weight uh, butterfly papillon with this because it's a DK weight. Um, of course, you could do that with the sock cakes as well. But I looked on the designer's website, um, Marion Melacor, I think her name is. I'm better with Spanish than I am French, and I think that was a French one. She has a scarf pattern that is written for DK or worsted. So it's done lengthwise, which it doesn't look like much right now because it's all smashed up around there. But it's got little short rows. Look at my little sheet markers. I haven't embellished them yet. So I've gotten through the red, the orange, almost done with the yellow. Now it's coming onto the green. But just like with the, um, with the butterfly, some of them have a color change in them. Some of them are a solid color. But overall, they get that really cool um, short row. Yeah, so it's called the topographical scarf. Thank you, Melissa, for posting that. <laughs> um, so I decided this was gonna be a way better use of this yarn. The downside is it's a little fussy, not the easiest thing to take to the campground unless you have patience. So here's my one of my tips for this week. And a lot of them are written right in this pattern. Um, they seem a little intimidating at first, but the designer really is good at putting helpful tips and tricks in her patterns. So this one, you cast on 310 stitches. That's a lot of stitches. But she gives you advice on how to calculate the approximate amount of yarn you will need to do a long tail cast on. And guys, it was pretty close. That's what I had left. See that? Some of you would be nervous with that. I feel like that's plenty. <laughs> so her estimate was really good. She also tells you when you're casting on to put a stitch marker like every 25 stitches. I tend to do that a lot, either every 20 or every 10, 25. If I have a lot to cast on, it just makes it easier so I don't have to start counting from the beginning every single time. I'm one of those in this, I would just cast on a gazillion stitches, just keep casting, 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 stop every once in a while, count, put stitch markers in. Obviously, if you have totally round stitch markers like that, you won't be able to go back and put those in. But that is why the kind that open, like the little pair pins, are so much better because you can clip them, open and clip them where you want them. So the other piece of advice that I'll give is if you have to rip this 310 stitches and a bunch of rows out completely, put it in a Ziploc bag or some sort of contained, um, like a bucket or 
obviously a clean one, but something that you have around. So when you take your needles out, all of your stitch markers will fall into a contained area. Um, Karen does that a lot with beads when she's working on a beaded scarf or something and you have to rip back. Uh, she'll put it like in a clear plastic bag and pull from there so the beads fall into the bag. Um, I didn't have that. I ended up with stitch markers in the grass at the campground. They were all over the place. So learn from my mistakes. One of the things I did do once I got going was every, so she suggests once you get into it, a stitch marker every 10 stitches. So I have 30 stitch markers on here. That's a lot. You guys can see them all on there. I had to dig because because I wasn't home. I had to dig through all of my project bags to get enough. But I had a set of these cute little sheep. This is what they look like in the package. You get a bunch of them. You see that little guy? And the goal is to embellish them so they look like that little guy. They're very cute. I got as far as making one. It's a great use for a little bit of scrap yarn. But I had enough of these that I used those specifically every 25 stitches. My middle ones, I just kind of used whatever. But I know between here and here is 25 stitches. Between here and here is 25 stitches. A pattern like this, which if you've heard me talk about the butterfly shawl before, uh, you've heard me mention that. It's one that I couldn't do here in the shop because it's a lot of concentrating and a lot of counting. Um, eight, 10, eight, 10. If I had followed her recommendations and put stitch markers in on the actual butterfly shawl, it probably would have helped me a lot. This is going so much smoother with all of these stitch markers in here. Sometimes, lots of times, the designers know what they're talking about. So. Always have stitch markers on hand. Um, I don't know if you guys are still there. I don't see any comments. Where did you go? Tell me if you have a certain favorite type of stitch marker that you use. <laughs> okay, now I'm getting reactions, good. <laughs> I'm curious, just listening. Okay. I hear from a lot of you all that you end up knitting while you're, while I'm talking. So I get, that's why you can't type and knit at the same time. Clearly I get that. Check projects on Ravelry. I like it with the fringe. Joan just had a power surge. Eee. Okay. <laughs> Lisa, you're awestruck. So tell me if you have a certain type of stitch marker that you like some that you gravitate to more than others. Um, depending on the project, sometimes I like the ones that Sarah makes for me in the bead shop that look like something like that or something like this, just little dangles. But there's not just one kind and there's not just one project. So we were talking about ones that open and close. So the pear pins, I like these a lot. Haya Haya makes a set that have a whole bunch of different colors in there. Bryson makes some that are just all one color. So again, use that to your advantage. If you've got something that you're doing every so often, you can pull one color of your stitch marker and have it indicate something for you. That goes back to um, knitting a little bit more efficiently, I guess I'd say. Barbara, the Coco Knits markers. Oh, I have one flight of stitch markers left. And of course, my helper is not here this weekend, but Coco Knits makes this flight of stitch markers. And it is, I think it's like 120 different metal stitch markers. They're all closed. Nope, they're not all closed. They do have some. I don't know. Now I'm second guessing myself. Coco Knits makes some really good stitch markers. The closed ring ones don't have. Um, they don't have a gap in them to be opened. It's not like a regular jump ring, so it's a soldered closed. Joyce have some really tiny ones that are like a keychain. 
Yeah, Joyce, I heard you mentioning that when uh, you were here teaching the other day, and I didn't get a chance to peek over anybody's shoulder and see what you were talking about. So I'm curious about that. There are some open spiral ones. Oh, yeah, that's right. There are. The kind that don't kill the sweeper. <laughs> I think I would make a lot of money if I found the kind that don't disappear into the couch cushions or onto the um, seat in the car or into the vacuum. <laughs> somehow, somehow we'll, we'll get that made. But there are then the closed ring ones, plastic and metal. The cocoa knits are really cool. These ones are not cocoa knits. These are the rainbow rings, different sizes. That's the other thing. If you're fighting, with your stitch markers, it could be they, they're too big, they're too small. Having them in multiple sizes is a great idea. In different shapes. Knitter's Pride came out with some that were cubes, well, squares, squares and circles. These ones are metal. Those are fun too. So lots of stitch markers for a lot of different things. Sarah found so many stitch markers. <laughs> I imagine Sarah's moving right now into a new condo. And um, I'm curious if you found um, needles that you were missing on something or anything like that. So you can let us know on that. <laughs> Every time I clean a room, I find all kinds of things. I go from having no size five needle tips to having six of them. All right, so that's the topographical scarf. Top, yes, the next thing that I'm working on is, well, I'll show you my curly cue. I haven't, I haven't done a ton on it, but it does just keep growing. Curly cue coverlet. There we go. I have three of my five points. I'm getting close. It is to the point now where I have to kind of roll it up and get it in my project bag. That's something else you should have many of, project bags, all different kinds. Tammy, still have your grandmother's stitch markers. Are they metal or are they plastic? A lot of the ones that I had that came um, from relatives ended up cracking and losing my place in a project, which was not so great. So that's my curly cue coverlet um, that we did as a knit along, really fun project. Lots of short rows. I guess I'm into short rows right now. The last one that I'm working on right now is something that I am using my new yarn for. So new to the shop, but also discontinued one time sort of thing. More Cascade Heritage, but this batch is Heritage Silk Paints. And I know some of you came in and felt the, um, you're playing around with the Peruvian tones with the Heritage that I had before because of this, my Summer Shandy is those two. Um, the, these are the silk Peruvian tones. They do have a different feel to them than this batch of the heritage silk paints. They are both, yeah. Yep. So they're both 85% superwash merino, 15%. You see that purple? <laughs> um, 15% silk. Oh, Tammy, metal, some are plastic from when it was just invented. I guess they're old. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, now I know what you're talking about, Joyce. Yes, I have seen those before. So the other project I'm working on is my, I lost the pattern. You guys, I swear I had it right here. One moment, please. There we are. Slipping sideways pullover. This is one that would work really well if you got some of that last batch of yarn. Fingering weight yarn. This solves that problem. I don't know if I talked about it last week or not. People that say they can't wear horizontal stripes. Yes, you can. But 
this one gives you a really cool effect. Can you guys see that? So it does have some horizontal stripes in the middle, but then it's vertical along the side that gives you that elongated look. And I am using, what's great is the size, it goes from a 30 inch bust up to a 60 inch bust and calls for either two or three skeins of your main color, which in this case is a solid and one or two skeins of your contrast color. So again, we're between three and five skeins of fingering weight yarn for, for a sweater. This one has more of the option to do longer sleeves. I know that's something that a lot of people asked about because you pick up and knit the sleeves on, on this one, it's a little bit easier. So here is the beginning of my top. I'm using Heritage Solids, which is the stuff along the top row. And then the Heritage Silk Paints. These pretty autumn colors. That's one of the ones I'm gonna show in a little bit. I wanted to do something not quite so bright because I think this would be great for the fall. But it's really, it's just slip stitches. It's not hard. If you can knit one and slip one, intentionally. I know we all do it unintentionally sometimes. That's all it is, just a little slip stitch and stripes. You're carrying the yarns up the side so you don't have all these ends hanging out everywhere. That one, this one's going to be fun. It is, it is on size two and a half needles. I think it calls for, it calls for for 3.25 millimeter, which I believe are US threes. Um, I am on a US two and a half, which is a three millimeter, because I know I do tend to knit loosely. And I try, <laughs> I try to avoid knitting tops on a really small needle because it feels like it takes forever. But I really, really love the fabric that it creates. So I'm, I'm learning, I'm trying to get better about it. So if you have variegated fingering weight yarn, this is, would be a great way to use it. Another good thing to use variegated yarn, whether you have multiple skeins of one color or um, skeins in different colors is the flax light. <laughs> should I slow down? Tell me if I should slow down. Oh, you mean I'm powering through the project. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> So we talked about the summer shandy. This is one of those times where I, I feel like I need to make two of things because I like having them in the shop so you can see samples, but then I don't get to wear them. And this is the, the wearing kind of weather. So this is the flax sweater by Tin Can Knits. This is their original in um, worsted weight yarn. It's in Malabrigo. Rios. I just pulled five skeins and blended them out. But it's a it's part of their simple collection, which is um, they're all free patterns. And it's kind of like your first cardigan, your first pullover, your first sock, your first shawl. Um, they have some really good simple patterns. They came out with a flax light, which is a fingering weight version of this which would be a really good use, again, of the variegated yarns. I keep looking over here in the box because there's a box right down here. So that would be another option. If you are one of those people where you gravitate to the same colors frequently, this something like a fade, whether it's a sweater or a shawl, is a great use for that. Um, some people, I think, will get down on themselves because they say, oh, I, I gravitate to the same colors all the time. Well, that means they probably coordinate. A lot of them probably coordinate. Um, I do recommend for anybody that is knitting something where you want your sleeves to match the change the same way the body is. So see on the body, it went 
darker. If you want your sleeves to do the same thing, you need to make sure you keep yarn set aside for the sleeves. I tend to figure it's um, about half and half. If you use half the skein on the body and save half for your two sleeves, you should kind of be okay. But that is by no means um, law. That's just kind of what I figured out. I think I did sit down one day and figure out the number of stitches in the body of that sweater versus the number of stitches on the um, sleeves. So then I kind of figured out, okay, per row, how many do I need? I know, it's a lot of math. Sometimes I like math if it's not like having to come up with a quick answer. So that's the slipping sideways pullover. I do have the box of yarn here. We're gonna talk about that in a minute, but I have a couple things that I wanna mention. First, Joyce um, has one session left of her um, double knit class. Oh, I have her sample here. She actually brought me two samples to show off. This is the one they're doing in the class. So double knit is really, really neat. You're knitting the reverse, the front and back at the same time. So you're essentially knitting two pieces of fabric, but they are knit together. So you can't pull them apart. They're stuck. And she did bring another one just to show off what it looks like with more than two colors and how to do that. So cute. Okay. <laughs> so she's got one um, session left. They are halfway through their class. Um, probably she will offer it again if there's enough um, interest. I'm hoping she does because I want to take the class and it was too busy in here the other day for me to even listen in a little bit. Melissa, double knit, something you want to do. Me too, successfully. <laughs> um, but after that, Joan, in the fall, all right, hopefully we are able to get back to um, nonstop classes. That would be great. Um, Joyce is going to do a class on learning short rows and also learning how to knit backwards. Last week, you might remember that I com commented that she sent me a message about something. She found a pattern, Joyce found a pattern to teach short rows. If you've done that, still take the class because it is learning to knit backwards. And Joyce primarily knits continental with the yarn in her left hand and then she Norwegian pearls if you know what that is, but she knits some pearls with tensioning the yarn in her left hand, but she used to row with her right hand. So she can teach how to knit backwards with both hands. Joyce, the sock madness knitter. Yes, Joyce is the sock madness knitter. <laughs> she is um, a phenomenal instructor. She comes with handouts. She comes with songs. <laughs> Vicki says, yes. Uh, yeah, Vicky's in the class right now. You got your homework done. Excellent. Chris, are the classes on Zoom? They are not. I haven't figured out a good way to do knitting classes that are technique based. Um, I don't really have the facilities for them to be able to teach and go around the table and to be on Zoom with somebody also. I have considered recording them at least certain segments of what they're doing for um, people that take the classes to be able to refer back to. But unfortunately, they are just in-person classes right now. So that class is July 8th and July 15th, two Thursdays, again, from 10 a.m. to noon. I have not put that out on the website yet, but I will be doing that probably tomorrow, as long as somebody reminds me. <laughs> or I write a note to myself. Um, we keep it small. Again, um, four to five people in the class, four to five, not 45. Um, it's here in the shop, sitting around the table. She is a phenomenal teacher. She's taught the butterfly shawl. She's taught socks, all kinds of sock classes. Um, so July 8th and 15th. 
So let me know about that if you're interested. The next dates are the I-75 yarn crawl. I have gotten confirmation from three dyers that they are in and dyeing special stains for me for the yarn crawl and also my the shop's six year anniversary. So you guys, when that comes, I can't wait to show it to you. You might get a sneak peek early because the yarn crawl goes from Friday, July 30th through the following Saturday, August 7th. So somewhere in there, like um, maybe that Monday before, I might have a sneak peek to show you guys. We'll see. I just got a um, message from Veronica at Dream and Color Intent that that is on its way. It's on its way to me back there. So it's very exciting. <laughs> um, so that's July 30th through August 7th. The last event I wanted to talk about is our retreat, the Bayshore retreat out in Seaboy. That goes from September 23rd through 26th. It's a Thursday through a Sunday. Um, I already have oh, maybe 20 people signed up, which is awesome. Um, I like having a, a medium-sized group. I don't want it to be overwhelming. I want to still still be able to visit and chat with each other. Um, they're on Melissa birthday road trip. <laughs> yes, for the for the yarn crawl, you guys should do that. Um, so the Bayshore retreat. A, I do have signups for that on our website. There are different prices based on whether you want a room by yourself or double occupancy or triple occupancy. Um, I don't have a, a cap on it in terms of how many people I can have at this point. Um, it's just, we need enough notice and I need enough notice to plan projects, goodies, that sort of thing, the food. Linda says, the tea parents in Elk Grove, California has all the classes on Zoom that you can ask us forever. Huh. I also do a Facebook Live Tuesday through Saturday. Wow. Well, Linda, you've never watched live. You're watching live now. Thank you. Um, and that's, I will check into that. It's always a, a tricky thing to try and pick the brains of other business owners, especially other LYS owners. Um, I, I don't want to feel like I am taking away from something that another shop is doing. Um, clearly my, my Facebook lives are very different than a lot of people, a lot of shops, Facebook lives. I'm not like throwing a bunch of stuff out there until the end, because I'm going to get ready to, to show you guys some yarn. Um, that's it for events. Now I'm going to show you some yarn. So as I said, it is Cascade Silk Heritage Silk Paints. So fingering weight, stock weight yarn, 100 gram skeins. I'm assuming 437 yards because that's what almost all of theirs are. But I will double check. Yes, 100 grams, 437 yards. So I will prepare you guys a little bit in advance. This, um, oh yes, Joan, the fireworks knit along. <laughs> my mind is clearly all over the place. I had that on my on my other other note. Um, the fireworks knit along is the Marie Green summer sweater four day knit along anywhere from four to 10 days depending on the size sweater you're knitting that kicks off this Thursday, July 1st, she will do a Facebook live on her on her business page, which is Olive Knits. I believe it's 8 a.m. Pacific, so 11 a.m. Eastern time. And then from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., if you are local and would like to join us, I'm gonna do a little kickoff party here, um, either in the shop or in the restaurant over in the boardroom. We'll get some appetizers, we'll hang out. Um, I'll have some special things to either give away or buy or both that I'm working with Sarah over at the bead store to do 
Um, so if you think you might be joining me for that, um, mention it. I You don't have to RSVP for it, but it helps me give the guys over there a little bit of an idea of how many people might be coming. So that is this Thursday, July 1st, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. In the shop or in the boardroom, maybe both, we'll see. <laughs> Um, we do have a group of knitters that meet every Thursday over there and as it is, so they're kind of used to us taking over things. <laughs> yeah, Melissa, it's the day before you come into town, unless you're coming into town earlier on Thursday. I would love to see you here for that. So that is, I will also be creating an event for that on the Facebook page to remind everybody about it. Okay, so now yarn. Barbara, yeah, it's a little bit of a far drive for you to come from the UP just for a couple hours. I would love to see you though. <laughs> so Heritage Silk Paints, they are 100 gram skeins. I have 10 of 10 skeins of most of the colors except the one that I'm using right now, the pretty foresty green one. Um, so, and I have 11 different colors. I know that's a lot, but we'll go through and talk names. And if there are some that you want, I'm gonna do like I did before. So normally they are $24.99. Gotta love silk. It's so pretty, look at that one. Um, normally they're $24.99. Anybody who sees this and mentions it, they will be $18.99 a skein until they are gone. This was a one-time purchase. I have a big box of it. Once it's gone, it's gone. So you guys wanna see the colors? I know you do. That one's the second one that I was gonna talk about. So, uh-oh, it says my AirPods are gonna die, hang on. I'm going to switch you over. Hopefully this works. Tell me, can you still hear me? Oh, how about now? Maybe now you can hear me. I charged these right before I came. <laughs> Melissa, Melissa, are you giving me a thumbs up? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I had to switch between screens. <laughs> Okay, so 11 different colors. I have a limited supply of each, $18.99 a stain. They're not in number order. I'll talk color names and I will go through them a couple times, but I tried to put some together that were similar so you could see the difference between them. So my first two, this one's purple smoke, purples and grays. It's kind of like in that last batch, I had the brighter pinks and grays, but this one's those purples and it's not super bright. So that is purple smoke. It is different than the one that I was holding up just a minute ago, which is grapevine. But if you like purples, look at that. Those would be fun to do together as a fade. This one's got more of the greens in there. So purple smoke is the first one. Grapevine is the second one. If there are some you want, um, you can comment in the notes how many skeins you want, whether you're gonna pick them up or have me ship them to you. And we will keep track of it. If you don't feel comfortable putting that on the comments, you can send me a Facebook message through the shop. You can text or call the shop during shop hours. The shop number is 989-274-8571. Yeah. I don't want a comment to get lost. Um, Tanny asks if you're using that yarn for the slipping side. Slipping side. side. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Melissa. I am. That's this yarn. Uh, it's a heritage solid. So the normal 11 or 11.50 heritage. And then that is the silk. So you need, if you were going to do this, you would need 
what did I say? Two to three skeins of your main color, which would be, is what I'm using as the solid green. And then one or two skeins of the contrast color, depending. Melissa is also posting links to um, some really cool shawl patterns that are easily modified. So you could make it smaller with a one skein project. You could make it larger with two or three skeins. Um, there's some really cool things that she's posting. So make sure you um, come back and check on that. Hi, Diane, you are very late, but I think you have um, your intuitive senses are right up there because I, I just started talking about yarns. Okay, so that was the first two, the purple smoke and the grapevine. Oh, this next one is called Azul and it just looks like the beach. It looks like sea glass to me. It's so, so pretty. I love it. All different shades of blues and a little bit of those turquoises. That's Azul. If you went a little more green, Hi, Cora, late from Virginia. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Um, this one is Forest Glaze. Look at that. Oh, look at how those colors look in there. Isn't that so neat? So this one is all blues and turquoises. This one has those blues, but then there are pops of this darker teal. Well. I would say both turquoise and teal, turquoise and teal, and these coppery colors. That one looks like the beach to me too. This is Forest Glade. And again, I will go back through all of these again. The next one, you guys, some of these, I mean, a lot of these would be such a cool fade. Look at that. Look at how pretty that would be. Those two I talked about already. This next one is called Mountain. The olive green, some really, not, not like bright yellows, but in intense, I guess I would say. Yellows, grays, blues. There's this peachy tone in there. These things are just gorgeous. Melissa, ah, yes. Thank you for saying that. The regular $24.99, $18.99 for anybody watching the video. If you come in, make sure you just mention, I, I will try to remember, but make sure you mention that you saw it on the video. And so you get a discount, but that would be a beautiful fade. The next one, Oops, I'm trying to keep myself straight here. Oh, so that one was, I don't know if I said the name of this one. This one's Mountain. That's the last one I just showed, Mountain. Next is Shrine. This one looks a lot like one of the ones we had with the, with the Heritage, just the regular Heritage hand paints. It's so bright and happy. Any of these would be, well, the sorrel too. This sweater is, is perfect for this sort of thing, especially with the wool and silk blend. Uh, I think it would drape really nicely. It's got these olive greens. So that is Shrine. A paler version. Well, sort of paler version. Looks more of like the, the, the muted cousin is called Silk Flower. This is so beautiful. Very, very muted, but in, in the best way. It's not, it's not like pastels, because you still get these deep purples, these kind of blushy copper, well, rosy color. Up there, the yellows and turquoises. That silk flower. Uh, 
I know my orange girls really love orange and this is a gorgeous orange. It's almost right up there with some of the dreaming color oranges, almost, you know, they're the cashmere woods though. So look at this. This is called Coles, and that's a pretty accurate name, I think. Looks like fire. But that dark, like almost a brown black, these deep reds, the bright oranges, just looks like flames. This one is just is really, really neat. Um, again, ideas, the, the sorrel top, the slipping sideways top that I'm working on, the flax light, if you like sweaters, if you like shawls, Melissa posted links to a couple, one or two skein shawls, easily modifiable. So keep those in mind. So that's coals, like fire hot coal. Then it's sort of muted cousin is late fall. This is what I'm using in my top. Really, really soft. There we go. We'll show you the difference in the ball versus in the stain. Sometimes it's easy to see it looks the same. Sometimes it's more difficult, but it's very, it's very fall and how it knits up. I know I don't have a lot in one section, but it's just little speckles of color. It's not, it's not in your face bright. I like that one a lot. This is late fall. Two left and they're pretty. Of course, they're all pretty. The first one is rose bush. It's the pinks, pinks and teals. Look at that. Rose bush. There's not a lot of green in it like I would think there would be with rose. This is really a deep teal turquoise. Teal or turquoise or both. There's both in there. Pink, though. I love, love that. Melissa, something similar to the rose bush. So pretty. Yardage is 437 yards per skein, 100 grams. 85% Superwash Merino, 15% silk. I want to keep them all for myself, but I don't think I would make it through all of these boxes of yarn. Then this last one. Okay, just making sure. This last one reminds me a lot of what I used for my summer shandy. This is a Hawaiian reef. I love how on camera you can really see how they're hand dyed in the stain. Hand painted with love. Pinks, look at, you can't even see that. Look at that. Look at that bright pink down in there. They look so different sometimes when you take them out of the stain and, the, and you have those little bits hiding in there sometimes. But no, I had one stain left of what I used for my top. That was the heritage hand paints that we used, that we talked about two weeks ago, I think. Yeah, I think two weeks ago. What I used in this along with the blue. So you can see they are, they are similar. This is the one I used. This is the new one, the silk. It's more of a bluey version, which is, it would pop if you put it with something like the bright pink, then your blues would show a lot more. So this one is Hawaiian Reef. So as I said, I have 10 of each color. They are a discontinued yarn from Cascade. So it was kind of just a one-time get it while you can batch. I did. I got as much as I could feasibly get, reasonably get. So I could share them with you. So tell me, is there a color that you like that you want to see again? Do you want me to go through all of them again? Do you want me to put a couple of them together? You, you guys tell me what you want to see.
I will wait while you give me comments and I will play with different combinations. Look at that. Even this way, look at that, there we go. Light to dark fades. I will, um, Chris, you missed it. Yep, I can, I will go back through, absolutely. I will go back through, I will give you colored names. Um, again, I believe I did this last time. I'll try to post pictures of all of the colors. That way you have, um, it's not so, not so confusing with everything. All right, so let me put my stuff back in order. Okay, Melissa Coles needs to go home with me. <laughs> I know it's beautiful. I, I really, I'm not. Tammy Silk Flower, yes. Mary Smoke with what color for the sideways, slipping sideways? So if I was going to do this in that slipping sideways pullover. I would go a couple different ways, or you have multiple choices. You could go with um, like this creamy, it's not a white, but it's kind of like a buttery, not even butter, a pale, 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 pale orange. You could go really dark and go dark, dark brown. If you wanna really pull out the fire theme, you could pull a brighter red than what's in here. The red that's in here is pretty, but it's a deep red. You can pull a brighter red and get those flames yellow. A yellow would be fantastic with that too. <laughs> so, oh, that's Coles. You're asking about smoke. Yeah, Mary, tell me which one you're talking about. Okay, so starting back at the beginning, this is purple smoke. That's the first one. Because I don't tend to like high, high contrast with things like that. I want it to, I want the pattern to show, but I don't want it to necessarily always be in your, in your face. Um, I would probably go with a dark gray. Look at that. Yeah, I'd probably go with a dark gray for that. That's the purple smoke. But you all give me ideas too. Like if you see colors, what, what do you think would look good with it? Um, I know I can't, if you're out of town, you can't come in and play with all those heritage solids and find right, the right colors to mix with it or even some of the hand dyed. Obviously those are gonna be beautiful also. Um, but I am happy to take pictures and text them to people. Uh, if you're out of town, text the shop phone and I'm happy to do that. Great, yes. Melissa's on the same page with me, good. Okay, so that was purple smoke. Next is grapevine. Purples with the pop, the pop of fuchsia, yeah, I guess. Sometimes I have a hard time describing colors with the right name, but you've got this deep great teals and turquoises in here, greens, So that's grapevine. If I were gonna do something with this in, in the contrast color, I would go with a bright green, not like apple fluorescent green, but a bright green would pop in this and really pull out those greens. It would make me think of all those, the leaves and vines too. So that was grapevine. This is azul. For all of my blue lovers. I'm telling you, it just looks like sea glass, like beach glass. So pretty. A muted blue for that one. That would work too, Melissa. Okay, so that's the blues. Next is Forest Glade. 
got a little bit of these. I, I would almost call it like a fawn, fawn brown in there. Again, teals and turquoises, look at that. You get both the brights and the more deep tones and the greens. That one's gorgeous too. I think I should give myself some homework and find a thesaurus and find some better words. <laughs> it's probably a good thing I don't watch this back because it would drive me crazy. So I apologize to you guys on that. Um, I used to watch a whole bunch of cooking shows and they would always say, you can't describe something as delicious. That doesn't tell anybody anything about it. So I try and keep that in mind, but you guys can see it too. You don't have to taste it. Mountain. Yellows, the greens. This does look like, I don't know, the side of the mountain in the springtime. Those yellowy greens. Blue of the sky, shadows, that's mountain. And this is kind of a, a peachy brown, more than just a brown, orangey. And that's what we call ugly yellow. It's, it's really ugly green, ugly yellow. <laughs> it's like olive and it's, we, I don't think it's ugly. Sarah doesn't think it's ugly. It's just what we've, <laughs> <laughs> what we've termed it, but it it's, I guess I would say mustard in the best way possible. So that was mountain. Oh, Diane, there you go. Melissa answered, I wasn't paying any attention. I'll show you what I have done so far. This is what I have done so far with it. Marianne, if you're asking about the sweater I'm wearing, this is the Summer Sorrel. Um, Melissa posted a link to it, but I'm, I'm sure she can post another link down here as well. The one that I'm wearing, the one that I'm working on is the one she just posted, the Slipping Sideways. All right. This is Shrine. A little bit deeper in color than Mountain. But again, the two of those together would be a beautiful fade, very neutral, or not very neutral, a very, um, not a high contrast change from this lighter one, mountain to shrine. You get more of like the rosy pinks and the blues and the greens. Like jewel tones in there. The skein just before mountain would be forest glade. If that's the one you're talking about, Diane. This one? That's forest glade. You may have to go back and watch. And I, like I said, I will post um, photos with the names of the colors. This is silk flower. Muted, like I said, I'm not going to call these pastels. They're muted colors. The purples, greens. Um, rose colored. And the way they all just kind of blend together. Look at that. So all of these are going to give you a similar look to this in terms of um, not being really long stretches of one color. So you're going to get maybe two or three stitches in one color before it changes to something else. So um, there always is the possibility that colors will pool where in a couple rows, they'll stack on top of each other. Sometimes that doesn't bother me. Sometimes it does. And I have to figure out how to make that work. In this, you can see it a little bit, but not really because it's the reverse stockinette side. So it really kind of hides a lot of that too. So that was silk flower. That's the fire, fiery one. I really, 
I really think some of this needs to come home with me. <laughs> Unless you all buy it. If you buy it all, then I can't, which is good because I have lots of other yarns to take home with me too. But look at those, that deep orange, those browns, little pop of red in there for those flames. That's Coles. We left. There is late fall. That's the one I'm using right now in my sweater. So I don't have 10 of these. I am for the slipping sideways pullover. I am doing a third size, which would be a 36 inch bust. They do recommend three to five inches of ease in this, the slipping sideways pullover. Um, I don't like very much ease normally, so I try and knit one that's pretty close to my size. But according to this, I need one gain of this and two of my main color. So that's what that looks like. In the ball, late fall. <laughs> it's on size two and a half needles, but I'm hoping I have it done by late fall. I hope I, I hope I have it done sooner than that. And the last two are my pinks. Rose bush is the brighter, more intense one. Got those bright pinks in there. I love how they go from the deep color to more of the pale color. Sometimes they overlap, so you get more of a fuchsia purple. Sometimes you get a lot of the really bright, bright. Look at that hiding under there, that pink. That's rose bush. And the last one is Hawaiian Reef. Kind of the light, more lighthearted version of, of the rose bush. So again, if you were gonna do a couple together in some sort of fade, that would be beautiful. And you could put grapevine with it too. Look at that. Mm. Endless possibilities. Well, not endless because I haven't, I don't have an endless amount of yarn, but lots of possibilities. <laughs> Diane, rose bush. We're splayed with what other yarn? Hmm. What would I do with that? Let me think on that one. So when I post pictures of the colors, I will, um, I'll try and put some solids with them too, if you want me to, if, if you think that's something that you would be interested in. Um, it's 11 different colors in this box, which is not that big a deal. So I can post pictures of each of them on their own with solids versus two or three in a, in a bunch. But I might do both. <laughs> okay, so I think I've probably kept you long enough. It's been over an hour, you guys. I apologize. I try and keep it under, I try and keep it close to 45 minutes or so, but yarn, come on. Okay, um, again, if you go back and watch the replay, let me know if there's something you're interested in. I'm happy to text, chat on the phone, um, message via Instagram or Facebook Messenger, or put a comment in the comments, and I will try and make sure that I get back with you, touch base. Melissa is my right-hand woman, and she's usually pretty good about making sure I don't miss something too. So thank you for tuning in and hanging out with me and supporting the shop. I hope to see some of you this Thursday for the um, fireworks knit along. Again, that's 6.30 to 8.30 here, either in the shop or the boardroom, which is connected to the building, 203 South Washington in downtown Saginaw, Michigan. And that is it. I will, I hope everybody has a fantastic week. I hope I inspired you to start new things or get something off the needle so you can start something new finish something you love and would love to use, wear, gift, all the things. Keep being creative. 
Have a great week and I will see you all next time. Bye. Well...